The Essential Attitudes for Practicing Mindfulness. This is part two. Okay, so far as we approach mindfulness, we are practicing non-judging, not judging each and every item, person, thought, vacation, weather pattern, animal, vegetable, or mineral we encounter. Also, we are seeing what it's like to be patient with ourselves, to see what it's like not to judge ourselves in relation to others throughout the day. Next, as we examine another essential practice for mindfulness, we hope to develop a beginner's mind, meaning a childlike wonder, meeting each day, each moment with curiosity and without letting any preconceived ideas interfere with our perception. The idea is to see what is really there. Each fall in the Writing Center here at Wake Tech, we tutors and the ILC help English students understand their responsibility to analyze an assigned essay, one written by Walker Percy called Loss of the Creature. It is a very profound essay about critical thinking that leads the readers to explore critical thinking. It's very dense and in its presence, many students lurch towards despair. However, once we crack the code, it's eye-opening. One of my favorite passages describes how difficult it is for us as tourists in the 21st century to see a natural wonder like the Grand Canyon without bringing along a bunch of stuff from other people and other sources. When I started planning my visit to that natural park 10 years ago, of course I had already seen innumerable pictures of the Grand Canyon and clips from nature videos. I had also heard a lot on the subject from my mother, who had hated getting up at 4 a.m. to join an expedition led by my father to watch the sunrise over the canyon, when she, unlike my father, thought an 8 a.m. view from the hotel window would have been just swell. She had polished the story down to a five-minute diatribe by the time I was seven. Later, despite growing up with this legend about snakes and wild burrows and bitter cold and fog, my sister decided to go with her young family. So I got a new version from her. She wept at the beauty. She marveled at the expanse of time represented by the layers of strata. She pored over her guidebooks and the park displays, trying to identify the dinosaur layer for her stegosaurus-obsessed six-year-old son. Plus, she found beautiful turquoise jewelry in the gift shop at the Grand Canyon Inn. So I thought, maybe I could go there after all. But... Was I ready to approach the Grand Canyon with a beginner's eye? No. I started comparing my trip to my sister's before I ever arrived. My husband didn't want to spend the amount of money it would take to stay at the luxurious, on-site, four-star, immaculate breakfast offering lodge that my sister had stayed in. We stayed in a motel on the highway with spiders and a thin wall and listen to a woman in the next room repeatedly wail, you don't understand me. I was eager to get into the park the next morning and I annoyed my husband by refusing to shop for turquoise jewelry at a yard sale next to the motel. I was ready to get to the official gift shops. Therefore, as my husband pitched our car into the curves of the winding drive into the park, I was not only carsick, but I was also peeved with my cheapskate revenge exacting husband and hungry because we'd eaten peanut butter crackers for breakfast instead of a hotel meal. Did I mention envy of my sister and a peculiar resemblance to my mother? Even so, as the car whipped around a new turn, I stopped mid-grumble and was transfixed. The clutter whooshed out of my head for one moment because suddenly there was my first view of the Grand Canyon. My Grand Canyon. The abrupt switch from negativity to awe jolted me into an awareness of what was there, what I was seeing. 
Unfortunately, the rest of the experience was cluttered with paved walkways, tram schedules, and directional signs. But I often try to reenact that moment in the moment. I experiment sometimes by seeing if I can look at my younger son with fresh eyes as if we've just met that day. That gets very interesting. I try not to take the ordinary for granted. I try to see with a beginner's eye. When I practice mindfulness, I try to dismiss the expectation of what the session will be because each moment in meditation is unique, just as each moment in life is unique.